Hi friends, Krista here. Thank you so much for stopping by Books and Jams. I am very excited about today's video. I have had these items sitting on my counter for a couple days waiting till the time was right to start this video. So what we're going to do today, as you probably know from the title and thumbnail, is I ordered three middle grade blind date with the books from Etsy, three different Etsy shops, and I have not yet opened them. And I'm very excited. Today is Friday. I'm going to open them with you today and then read them over the weekend if they're not something that I've already read and then wrap it up at the end of the weekend or when I'm done with the third book. So I'm really excited. <laughs> I will link all three shops down in the description below. I don't even know how I got started with this. Oh, I do. I had a prize that I had to order for um, using Double Book Co's uh, blind date with a book. And then I'm like, let me look up other blind date with the books and see if they have middle grade options. And there were. So I have three and I'm really excited. So I'm just going to show you how they're all packaged. We're going to kind of rate them as we go together. I did. None of them asked for my Goodreads, but I did in the comments, give them my Goodreads, just in the hopes that I don't get a book that I've already read. So we'll see. But this is a hardcover. I can tell that. It's wrapped up really nicely. The sticker is on here, Jacqueline Ann. And again, I will link all of the three Etsy shops that I used down in the description, but let's look and see if I like one better than the other. So this is wrapped up pretty nicely here, pretty secure. And I have a feeling, yeah, I, I can't even see the book yet. So this says, oh, she did. Checked my Goodreads and picked one I've never read. Enjoy, Jacqueline. Yay! I'm excited that she actually used my Goodreads. The sticker that's on here, it says strong main character vibes. That's a cute sticker. That's like a nice little bonus treat that I wasn't expecting. It's cute. It has a little, um, what's this called? I don't know, has a little tie on here, blind date with a middle grade hardback. It doesn't tell me anything about the book, so I have no clues to go by, except that she did check my Goodreads. So let's see what I got. Ooh. This is cool cover, Sarah Lost and Found. I've never even heard of this, by Virginia Castleman. It's kind of like a sky. She's like upside down up here. And then it looks like a tornado or some sort. Sometimes there's a tug of war inside of me. My head says one thing. My stomach says another. Like yesterday, when I stole a roll of toilet paper towels from the 7-Eleven around the corner, my head said don't. My stomach said do. So I did. I stole. And yeah, paper towels might seem like a strange thing to steal. I mean, I could have stolen some candy or crackers or something, but paper towels last longer than food. A roll of paper towels can feed me and my sister, Anna, for a whole week, sometimes more. Can feed them? I'm curious about that. Sarah and Anna Olson have spent a lot of time alone. Their mom left them years ago. The last thing she said was to look after each other, and then she vanished. Their dad plays drums in a band and he's out late coming home drunk if he comes home at all. But he says family always sticks together. Sarah's 10 and Anna's 12, but Sarah's the one in charge. She takes care of her sister because Anna has trouble taking care of herself. They were in foster care once and got separated. And after that, Anna hasn't been quite right, but it's okay. Sarah can handle things. I don't even want to keep reading. Like this sounds like it's going to be super emotional. And I'm so excited. I've never heard of it. When was this published? Okay, so this was published in 2014. Not super old, but I'm excited. Never heard of that one. Fun. So that one's from Jacqueline Ann. The next one came in this really fun mailing envelope. I just thought that that was a delight to get in the mail. So springy and fun. This one is from Baby Doll Bookshop. Thank you for your support, Baby Doll Bookshop. Your blind date got all dressed up for you. So let's see what this one is. This is cute. This one is a paperback, feels like. Middle grade adventure. Look how pretty that is. Like she took the time to make this look really nice. I love that. That's a fun little, a fun little treat. Baby doll bookshop. Nice, nice job with your packaging for sure. Oh, it's hard to open. It's good. It's in there really good. It's not moving around at all. Getting banged up. Okay. Oh, I do own this one. I'm kind of bummed. So she did not use my Goodreads, 
but I will still, I will still read it this weekend. It's Gone Away Lake by Elizabeth Enright. So now I have an extra copy of this. So we're going to turn this into a giveaway. <laughs> if you're interested in a copy of Gone Away Lake, go ahead and comment down below, Gone Away Lake, put like that you're interested in the, and I'll do a little giveaway of that as well um, because I do already own this one, but I will be reading it this weekend. So bummer that she didn't use my Goodreads that I gave her, but I understand like that they might not have all the time or whatnot. This is a Newbery Honor book. Summer has a magic all its own, it says. When Portia sets out for a visit with her cousin Julian, she expects fun and adventure, but of the usual kind, exploring in the woods near Julian's house, collecting stones and bugs, playing games throughout the long, lazy days. But this summer is different. On their first day exploring, Portia and Julian discover an enormous boulder with a mysterious message, a swamp choked with reeds and quicksand, and on the far side of the swamp, a ghost town. Ooh, fuck. I'm going to stop reading there. That sounds really, really exciting. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I've heard good things about this one and I do already own it. So that's good. So one and one. <laughs> and this third one is from Savvy Book Collective online bookstore. Um, I will link them down below as well. This one is tied up with string and tissue paper. It is a hardcover. Let's see. Well, that yarn came off really easily. Nice. Let's see what this one is. Oh, it's also, oh, oh my goodness. Okay, there's fun things. This is wrapped up, cute. It says children's blind date, mystery, important clues, thrilling adventure, fun. Oh, cool. It came with a sticker and a bookmark. I did not expect that. I might have known that when I first purchased it, but I did not remember. And it's been a little while. So that's kind of fun. I'm trying to get them out of here so I can show you. Here we go. A cute little Monstera leaf sticker. That's cute. And this cute little bookmark, double-sided, same print on both sides, but I like that it's kind of the smaller size. That's really sweet. And, oh, just her card, Savvy Book Collective. But let's check out this mystery with important clues and thrilling adventure. It's kind of fun. <laughs> opening presents that I bought for myself. I did, I should say, I did pay for all of these on my own. I did not, um, they didn't get sent to me or anything. I did request and pay for them all on my own. So this looks like an older book. Oh, this is kind of fun. It's a Nancy Drew, The Secret of the Old Clock. Is this the first one by Carolyn Keene? I don't remember what the first one is. I have to tell you, I never read Nancy Drew growing up. And I do believe this is the first one, The Secret of the Old Clock. There's a whole list of them here and The Secret of the Old Clock is first. So that's kind of cool. Oh, look at that printed hardcover. I love it. I'm kind of, I'm kind of excited about this. I, I mean, this is like a mixed, mixed bag, these three books. Let's see when this was originally published. 1930. So if I read this this weekend, it could count for my book that's older than me. Look at this fun illustration in the front of it here. Are there illustrations throughout? No, there are not. There is an introduction by Sarah Paretsky. So this looks pretty, th this looks pretty thick, but once you get into the actual story, the margins are really wide. There's a huge space uh, all around the word. So I don't feel like this will take me super long to read. So here are the three that I will be reading this weekend. The Secret of the Old Clock by Carolyn Keene, the first in the Nancy Drew series. So we have like an older classic and that is from Savvy Book Collective. Gone Away Lake is a newer, uh, let me see when this was published. Oh, look at there's illustrations in this one too. I forgot to show you. Not all the way through. Oh, there are some all the way through. There are some throughout. So that's kind of fun. This one was published... 1957. So this one was published in 1957, which will also make it older, a book that's older than me for the middle grade March prompts. And then we do have this newer one, 2014, Sarah Lost and Found. I gotta say, I'm probably most excited of this one because I've just never heard of it before. And I'm a little bummed that I got a book that I already own, but I haven't read it yet. So if she just looked at my read books, it's okay. Like, it's okay. It's fine. It's a book I wanted to read anyway. Now I'm just a little more motivated. So I will be reading these three books and I will come and tell you my thoughts on them. And it'll be a little, a little mini reading vlog. 
So let's get reading. All right, it's Friday night and I'm going to go to bed early. It's only like nine o'clock, but I'm so tired. I didn't sleep well last night, but I did finish already one of the three books. So I have listened to Nancy Drew, uh, The Secret of the Old Clock by Carolyn Keene. And I have zero nostalgia attached to this because I did not read this series as a, as a kid. And it wasn't one of those mysteries where you could pick out the clues as it goes along. Like it definitely was not that kind of a mystery and try to figure it out yourself. It was just more of a mystery story. There were aspects of it I liked. I liked how Nancy was very compassionate and caring for the people that she met throughout this book or the people in her life, I guess. It was maybe a little bit um, <laughs> unrealistic or I don't know, Nancy is this 18 year old, blonde haired, blue eyed. Her dad gave her a convertible for her 18th birthday. Her dad is a lawyer and she is allowed to work on this case and then sit in on the reading of a will that is like not anybody that she's related to. There are just uh, aspects of it that were a little unrealistic. And Nancy Drew was quite a wealthy young woman. <laughs> Our family was quite a wealthy family, I suppose. Um, I just, I had never read the series growing up. I, I think this might be my first Nancy Drew ever. So I don't, I don't see myself reading any more in this series in particular. I mean, it was cute and it's kind of fun to see what other so many other people grew up reading. Am I am I going to keep this? Probably not to be honest. Um because I don't see myself ever reading this again and because it doesn't have any nostalgia for me because I didn't read it as a kid, I don't think that I will keep this one. So, I am a big fan. <laughs> I'm a big fan of the Savvy Book Collective. Like, I think she did a great job in picking something that I, had, I hadn't I had read before. And I love that it came with a bookmark and a sticker, which I am going to keep. And I I potentially would order from that. I, I potentially would order from this Etsy company again, for sure. But I just was not a huge fan of Nancy Drew. So I probably will give this, I don't know, like three stars. It was okay. I don't even think three stars. I might give it two stars, to be honest, because it didn't, it was only like a three and a half hour audiobook, first of all, super short, which is fine. That's not a, a knock against it. I kind of was hoping for a mystery that I could try to figure out along with her. I didn't care about the mystery at all. And it it, it wasn't at all kind of intense or suspenseful or keeping me on the edge of my seat. Uh, I didn't think it was predictable. I mean, it was a little bit predictable in that, of course, the, she's going to figure it out and it's all going to be solved by the end of the book. So, I mean, you know that's going to happen, obviously. But yeah, I don't know. Like two stars for me, like it's okay. I didn't, I didn't really care for it all that much. So I think it would be different if I had nostalgia attached to it, but I don't. So... That's that. I will probably pick up the other two, hopefully tomorrow. But for tonight, I'm going to bed. Hello. So it is a couple days later. I finished that um, Nancy Drew one on Friday. And then yesterday, Saturday, I listened to Gone Away Lake. And I really enjoyed this. In this book, we follow a couple of kids who go to their aunt and uncle's house, I think, for the summer. And while exploring, Portia and Julian, their cousins, they find this ghost town basically and turns out it's not as abandoned as they originally thought. There's a marsh and a bog and just a lot of adventuring around. A lot of nature and family relationships and learning to accept people for who they are and it really reminded me of going to my grandma's house with my cousins when I was younger and just kind of exploring the old farm. My grandma, uh, when my dad was growing up, it was an active farm. But when I was a kid, it was not an active farm anymore. But there was all the old barns and the milk house. And we were going to set up the milk house as like our little playhouse and to the point where we cleaned it all out and made curtains and everything. Um, and this book really reminded and made me very nostalgic for those days of exploring at grandma's house when I was little. So I really did enjoy this one. And it's funny because I don't think the writing was like 
blowing me away, but because of the nostalgia that it made me feel, as opposed to this one, which I was not nostalgic about at all, I really enjoyed this one so much more. It does count as a book older than me for middle grade March. And again, I will be giving away an extra copy of this because I already have one. So if you're interested in a Gone Away Lake, in a Gone Away, in Gone Away Lake, then let me know in the comments below and I'll put all those names in a hat and pick one out and send you send you a little prize. Not a prize, a copy of the book. So I am in the middle of Sarah Lost and Found. Not really in the middle. I'm about a quarter of the way through and already I can tell it's going to be very emotional story of these two girls whose parents are kind of like really struggling. The mom ran away and is, I guess, hiding from the law. The dad is in a band and he, like, they, they, they grossly neglect these two daughters who are then kind of forced to fend for themselves. And it's just going to deal with foster care and the abuse that these girls experience. And it's a pretty heavy, heavy duty book so far. So interesting uh, for a middle grade story, but I am enjoying it so far. But I'll let you know more about that once I finish it. But I did want to share with you, I received a bookmarks and breadsticks box. Books and bread is the website booksandbread.com. Books, bookmarks and breadsticks. Kim is um, a wonderful uh, company. Like her company is just so cool. And she offered to send me one because now they have a middle grade option. And I'm like, it's perfect because it's a, still a blind date with a book. So it fits with the theme of this video. And I have opened a book from her before. Uh, I've opened a box from her before, but it's been a couple of years and I'm just so excited for this middle grade option. Something that sets Kim's company apart, Bookmarks and Predsticks, is that each subscription box is going to deal with food in some way. So the book is going to have food in, like as a part of the story and there will be some um, objects and trinkets and things in here that are all going to be around some kind of foodie theme. Um, and also, Kim donates some of the proceeds to a local food bank or a food-centered uh, charity in her area. So I just think that that's really cool so that you're getting this fun box with some treats and some surprises in it, but then also you're donating to a really good cause. And I just think that that's like a quality that I really appreciate in a company. So I'm really excited to share bookmarks and breadsticks with you today. And thank you, Kim, so much for sending this to me. I will link all of her information in the description as well. But let's check out this middle grade box. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah, so last year I got the lemon box. Look at her cute little logo. Um, she just sent me a little note. In honor of middle grade March, I wanted to send you a read it any blind date with a book for middle grade readers. Oh yeah, so um, $3 per box is sent to fight hunger, is used to fight hunger. And if you use the code MGMARCH22, you can get $5 off of a box, which is normally $25. So you get a good deal if you use the code MGMARCH22 when you go and get your own little foodie box. So let's see what's in here. Oh, I'm so excited. Cosmo Nuts. Sweet chili cashews. I love it. Sweet and salty sriracha roasted cashews covered in toasted sesame seeds and brown sugar. Whoa. If I was somebody who ate nuts, I would that would sound really cool. I'm gonna share these with my I'm gonna share these with my brother because I just don't eat nuts. But I do eat chocolates. <laughs> Look at these cute little chocolates. Is it chocolates? Sunny seeds. Oh no, chocolate covered sunflower seeds. How cute is that? Very fun. This is from Sunny Seeds. Her bookmark, which is just adorable. I love her little bread, bread with a book logo. So cute. It's so cute. Um, and then also a sticker with the logo on it. Fabulous. Okay. And then here we have my book. It's very thin because it's a middle grade, right? Middle grade graphic novel, ages eight to 12. Taiwanese food is the kind of foodie connection. Taiwanese food, I have I have no idea what that could even be, but I'm really excited. And I don't really have any graphic novels on my TBR this year for Middle Grade March, so I might have to like read this right away. Let's see what it is. Oh my word, how cute is that? Measuring Up by Lily Lamont and Anne Zhu. A beautiful story about food, family, and finding your place in the world. Oh, how cute. So it's a fun kind of 
um, graphic style in here. 12 year old Cece has just moved from Taiwan to Seattle and the only thing she wants more than to fit in at her new school is to celebrate her grandmother, Ama, um, Ama's 70th birthday together. Cece cooks up a plan to bring Ama to her by winning the grand prize in a kids cooking contest to pay for Ama's plane ticket. I'm probably saying that wrong. It's A-M-A with an accent over it. There's just one problem. Cece only knows how to cook Taiwanese food. And after her pickled cucumber debacle at lunch, she's determined to channel her inner Julia child. Can Cece find a winning recipe to reunite with Ama, a way to fit in with her new friends and somehow find herself too? That sounds so lovely. Oh yeah. So I'm going to uh, include this in the video. I will read this one as well. So I have two more now to finish before finishing this vlog. But yay. Thank you, Kim. Again, all of the information about bookmarks and breadsticks will be in the description below as well as the code so that you can get a discount on that box if you're interested. So yeah, each box will come with some sweet treats, little sweet or savory treats, and a book. And that's a blind date with a book. I love it. So I will check back in once I get a little further in one or both of these books. All right, bye. It is now almost a week later since I started this vlog and I have finished the last two books that I needed to read to talk about with you. So I will quickly talk about them now. The first one is the one that I opened from Jacqueline Ann, I think was the name of her shop. And that is Sarah Lost and Found by Virginia Castleman. And this almost felt YA, but it was definitely still middle grade. In this one, we follow two sisters who are greatly neglected by their by their dad. And um, we oh, the story opens up with Sarah, the younger of the two, she's nine, stealing a, a package of paper towels from the store. And that's what they're going to eat for the next few days. They each eat half of a paper towel, her and her older sister. The dad is in a band, the mom has left, and the girls are left on their own a lot of the time. Very early in the story, social services shows up and the two girls kind of run out the back door and run to a family, an older couple that they have stayed with as, as like a temporary foster care situation. They'd stayed with them before. And they love this older couple. Uh, and as the story unfolds, we we learn a lot more about these two girls and their situation. They had been in foster care a couple different times. They had been split up once, and that is when the older sister shut down. Whatever had happened to her in that foster home, um, we learn l later she's got some scarring on her body. Like, she just had what I'm assuming was a horrible experience because now she is very uh, dependent on Sarah, barely talks to anyone, and quickly lashes out in anger by biting or other forms of aggression, uh, the older sister. So Sarah is at nine years old, kind of her sister's keeper, and has never really known acceptance and love. She believes her parents love her, but they are not really around. She has slipped through the cracks in school and doesn't really know how to read very well. There's just a lot of trauma and it's just, it was very heavy and very sad. I was invested because unfortunately, this is reality for a lot of kids. The foster care system is broken. Uh, it's just broken. And yet this story of these two sisters, I really loved their relationship with each other, but I, I felt like it was a lot for a nine-year-old to carry. It just was a really heavy and very sad book. And then I didn't love how it all ended. I'm always hopeful for the big red bow at the end. And when I'm reading middle grade, you kind of want that big red bow. This is not a big red bow ending for sure. The ideal doesn't happen for both of the two sisters that we've been following right along. This one was a tough one to rate and to think about because parts of it rang very true. And then parts of it, I was like, mm, I don't know about that. Uh, so it was a it was a tough one in in topic and conversation. It's not one that I would necessarily recommend if you are someone who's interested in foster care and adoption books. It might it might be interesting to read. I'm very curious about your thoughts if anyone else has read this one. Um, I ended up giving it three stars because I did enjoy reading it, even though it was heavy and sad for most of the way through. I just also felt like the disparity between the parts that were realistic and the parts that weren't, like it would suck me in and then I, and then I would roll my eyes a little bit like, mm, I'm not sure about that. And then it would suck me in again. And then it, I was just like a back and forth and back and forth. So I didn't, I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. 
let me know if any of you have read that one. And then the fourth book that I read is the one that I got in the Bookmarks and Breadsticks surprise or the Bookmarks and Breadsticks box that Kim sent to me and that was a graphic novel called Measuring Up by Lily Lamott and Anne Zhu. In this one we follow a young girl and her family who moved from Taiwan to uh, the West Pacific Northwest, I think Seattle area, her grandmother has to stay in Taiwan. So this whole book is really about this girl wanting her grandma to come and, and visit them in Seattle. I'm just going to say Seattle. I think it's that's I think that's where it was. Unfortunately, getting getting grandma to come over is a very expensive endeavor. <laughs> so she discovers that there's this competition to uh, a cooking competition for kids and the prize is a thousand dollars or something like that so she decides she's going to enter this competition uh, it makes sense one of the things that she loved to do with her grandmother in taiwan was cook her grandma taught her how to make lots of different taiwanese dishes it's one of her chores in her family to cook the rice and get dinner started and she often will prep the vegetables and stuff as well so that when mom comes home from work everything is started so she already loves cooking and it's something that she shares with her grandma so she wants to she wants to to win this money in order to get grandma to come throughout all of that she's also adjusting to life in america and making friends and often being mistaken for chinese or japanese and she's like no i'm taiwanese kind of a little tiny bit of bullying is mentioned in here and kind of just learning to trust the friends that she's making and and also the friends that she makes throughout the cooking competition it was a super cute story i really i mean it's a graphic novel i read through it pretty quickly kind of show some of the art style just so that you can kind of see it's cute. It was just it was just a really cute story. I love cross cultural stories, in particular in middle grade books where kids and fa their families come from another country and to America and and what that's like for them. Uh, I that's not an experience that I have ever had. So I th I feel like these um, I think on the currently reading podcast they call them window books. So some books are mirrors and they reveal ourselves to us and kind of reflect our own experience. And some books are window books where we get to look in on somebody else's experience and learn a little bit about that. And I love window books to just see life in from a different perspective. And I just the food in here was fabulous. The friendships were really special. Um, the family was great and supportive in general. I mean, the dad really does want her to be a researcher or like a scientist kind of like he is and she really has this passion for cooking she's quite young still so they're not like deciding her future or anything but dad is very focused on her getting good grades and we came to america so that you could have a better chance at life and on and on and so she's feeling the pressure from her dad but also in the end her parents are very supportive of her i just yeah i thought this was a lovely story it was a great addition to the the blind date with a book and actually this is probably my favorite of the four books that i read so I don't have the other two with me, but I've already talked about them in this video. So I've read Gone Away Lake. This was probably my favorite. Second would be Gone Away Lake, which was very nostalgic in just that feeling of um, adventure and, and creating life that connected to my growing up at my grandma's house. Um, third would be this one, Sarah Lost and Found. And then fourth would be the Nancy Drew. So that was a pretty successful, a pretty successful blind date with a book, I'd say. It was a lot of fun to just see what books would get sent to me and then read them and share them with you. So all of the links to all four companies, uh, businesses will be down below, the three Etsy shops and then Bookmarks and Bread Six. I will put all of that information down below. And also, again, I have a copy of Gone Away Lake. So if you are interested in winning a, a copy of Gone Away Lake. I will be happy to send that out. One week from today, I will pick from everybody who is has expressed interest in Gone Away Lake, and I will uh, go ahead and send you send you my extra copy because I didn't get two of them. I hope that you enjoyed this. Something a little bit different for middle grade March. Still reading middle grade books, but they were surprises to me, which is a little fun to add to my reading experience this month. Uh, I would love to chat with you about these books or anything else down in the comments below. You guys know I always love talking with you down there. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your support and your kindness and your comments and your likes and all of the things. You guys are awesome and I cannot wait to talk to you in another video very soon. Bye.